Hello again, fourth graders. Here we are. I'm going to keep going with The King's Equal by Katherine Patterson. Such a fun story. Chapter four. I'm on a roll. Here we go. The last day of the year had arrived. The counselors who had lived the past 12 months in fear were now resigned to their fate. They spent the final hours with their families, comforting their weeping wives and embracing their sad-faced children. At an hour before midnight, the wisest of the counselors arose from the family table, bathed and dressed himself in the finest robes that he owned. Just as he was about to leave for the palace, there came a knock on the door. The counselor opened the door and there before him stood the most beautiful young woman he had ever seen. I've been sent to your house, she said, for you are to take me to the prince. The counselor hardly dared to hope, and yet? I must warn you, he said, the prince is a very hard man. If he, done, if he does not accept you as his equal, I cannot promise that any of us will escape with our lives. I am not afraid, Rosamond answered. Neither should you be, for I promise you that tonight you will sleep in your own bed. The counselor did not question further, for he thought if this young woman were half as wise or wealthy as she is beautiful, no man would be able to resist her. When they arrived at the palace, the prince was already shouting, Where is my wife, you incompetent fools? The year is over, and you still have not found her. To the dungeon with all of you. The wise counselor stepped forward. Your majesty, he said, bowing deeply. May I present the princess Rosamond? On the first stroke of midnight, there came before the throne the most beautiful woman the prince had ever seen. From the first moment he saw her, Raphael was determined to have Rosamond for his wife. You are the most beautiful creature I have ever seen, he said. If you say so, my lord, Rosamond said humbly. Suddenly, the prince remembered his father's words. The queen must be the king's equal in intelligence and wealth as well as beauty. You are certainly beautiful, Raphael said, but are you as intelligent, as intelligent as I? That is for you to decide, Rosamond said. But I do know one thing that no one else knows. What could you know that I do not? The prince asked haughtily. I know, said Rosamond quietly, so that no one could hear. I know that you are very lonely. The prince looked at her in astonishment. Until that moment, he had not known how very lonely he was. How could this woman, who was after all a stranger, know him better than he knew himself? Oh, very well, he said gruffly. You have passed two tests, but there is still the requirement of wealth. Mm -hmm. What proof do you offer that your wealth can equal mine? None, my lord, for as you see, I have brought nothing with me, but perhaps there is a way that we can judge. Is there anything at this moment, anything you desire that you do not have? When he heard her question, the prince's brain whirled with thoughts of vast lands, sailing ships and diamonds, and above all, his father's crown. Of course, he said angrily, there are things I desire that I do not possess. Then, said Rosamond quietly, perhaps you are poorer than I, for there is nothing I desire that I do not already possess. The king's equal, the king's equal, shouted the wisest of the counselors. She is found, and all the counselors shouted, hooray for the king's equal. Raphael was pleased, for at that moment, the thing he most desired was for Rosamond to be his wife. He held out his hand to her. It is decided, he said, according to the ancient law, 
and my father's blessing. You shall be queen of the realm and my wife. But Rosamond did not take his hand. I shall be glad to be queen of the realm, she said. But I'm afraid I cannot be your wife. Because by your own admission, you have declared that I am the most beautiful creature you have ever seen. That I have knowledge you did not possess. And that although I have everything I desire, there are many things you desire that are not yours. By your own words, my lord, you have declared me more than equal to you. <gasps> Raphael was furious, but he knew that his own foolishness had been his undoing. Now that she seemed unattainable, he desired her more than ever. What must I do then to win you for my wife, he cried out. I am not sure, said Rosamond, but perhaps there is a way. Mm -hmm. Yes, up in a mountain pasture, there is an old goat herd shack, and there are three goats there. You must go and live there and take care of the goats for one year. At the end of the year, you must return to the palace, bringing all three goats with you alive and well. If in that time you have become in every way my equal, then you and I will be married and rule the realm together as king and queen. Thus it was that Rosamond sent for her father to live with her in the palace while Raphael set out for the mountain to live a year with the goats. Yes, and that was the end of chapter four. And now you can't wait for chapter five. Hmm, look for it soon. Bye.